Hey guys, this is Angry Joe, and I'm here with Kevin, a game designer on Live Lock. This is uh, like the first time you're showing off this game to the public. Yeah, we're extremely excited. One of the first times. It's the first consumer-facing uh, demo we've done so far. Uh, we've already seen about five or six hundred people play it. Yeah. The response has been really positive so far. So as a, a small kind of, we're like kind of indie size. Yeah, the yeah. Studio. Uh, it's just ridiculous to see people playing it and really enjoying it so far. Well, thanks so much for, for, for allowing me to take some direct feed footage. So this is exclusive for you guys. Um, I I think the game looks beautiful. It's amazing. It's got this art style and, and universe uh, lore that, that that's really interesting to me. So I wanted to seek it out and learn more about it. So tell us a little bit about Livelock and, and what it's going to be. Sure. Uh, Livelock is set about 150 years in the future. Um, basically, there's a mass cataclysmic event which kills all the biological life on Earth. So all the people, all the animals, all the plants. Uh, but just before this happened... We're dead. Yeah, we're toast. <laughs> Damn. Um, but just before this happened, kind of uh, humanity found out about it. And we knew yeah. we had 10 years. And it galvanized all of mankind. And we were able to have all these advanced breakthroughs in technology. So essentially, Livelock, you're playing as a large mechanical body. But you have a human consciousness that's nice. been downloaded. Yeah. So as you play through the game, you learn a little bit more about what happened to humanity before and after the cataclysm, but you also learn more about your personality. You start mm -hmm. to remember your past, uh, your friends and your family, and the, the events leading up to the cataclysm. So would you say that there's a storyline, or are we just doing a you know mission strung along? So yeah, there's definitely a story. Uh, we we wanted to have a really action-packed, uh, as you can see, there's ridiculous explosions oh, all yeah. the time. Oh yeah, I love your particle effects, man. Yeah, um, but as you play through the game, you do learn a lot more. Uh, mm -hmm. We've scattered audio logs all throughout the levels, so if you're more of a action-centric player, you can just smash through all the robots, destroying everything on your way. Mm -hmm. If you want to explore a little bit more, if you want to learn more about the backstory and the lore, uh, we have these audio logs for you. We have data cards. You can learn more about the different uh, character classes. You can learn more about the enemies as well. So we wanted to cater to both audiences. Now, obviously, we're seeing three people here. Is this AI, or are these actual human players? So yeah, uh, Livelock is a three-player cooperative. Mm -hmm. uh, twin and why'd you shooter. go with three? It's uh, usually four, isn't it? Right, so <laughs> two. Four, four is kind of, in our opinion, four is more um, a throwback to uh, like couch play right. it was Super, or, uh, GameCube and that sort of stuff. You play with four of your friends. For us, from the very start of the project, we decided we wanted to have a three-player co-op experience. Okay. And our three players are each of the three Holy Trinity character archetypes. So right now we're playing as Hex. He's our marksman. Uh, he's really sarcastic. He has a really unique personality. We have Vanguard, who's the more tank archetype, mm -hmm. and Catalyst is our more support style. So basically the whole game was designed with having these three uh, particular archetypes in mind. So that goes with how the enemies were designed, how the levels were designed. Everything is just wrapped up to deliver a really solid uh, three-player experience. Now, as we're playing the game, uh, are we able to customize our, our AI robots here? Are we, you know, are we picking up items? What, what happens as yeah. we progress through the game? As you, uh, when you start the game, uh, you have access to one weapon and one special ability. Mm -hmm. As you level up and play through the game, you'll unlock additional weapons. Each class has six weapons uh, and five special abilities. And at the beginning of each mission, you choose three weapons and three abilities. So mm -hmm. um, you can customize your character based on the play style that you like. Mm -hmm. uh, as you play, you also uh, pick up these what are called carbon nano nanotubes, mm -hmm. and basically they help upgrade your weapon. So let's say you're playing the hex character and you really like the mass driver, which is kind of like a sniper rifle. You can increase its rate of fire, you can increase its damage, you can, can increase your clip size. So you can really customize your character based on your favorite uh, play style. What are the plans for for the game, the story? How, how long do you think this adventure is? Are, are there multiple paths throughout these levels? Or are we looking at a, a linear, more story-focused thing? So we have the, the main uh, main game mode is the campaign mode. And this is where you play through the main story of Livelock. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes place through three different chapters. Each chapter has its own enemy faction. Here we're looking at the Abaddon uh, faction. They're all they're very corrupted machines. They they evolved rapidly in a very weird direction compared to them some of the other factions. Um, as you play through the campaign, it takes about four or five hours. Uh, we have three levels of difficulty, so you can replay the game at, uh, and challenge yourself. Mm -hmm. You can also replay the game as a different character. 
And in addition to the main story campaign, we have what's called open protocol mode. Mm -hmm. And this is more of a procedurally generated, uh, replayable standalone mission. So each time you play it, yeah. the level layout's slightly different, the enemy combinations are slightly different. We have some other effects we're playing around with. So that's a more uh, a procedurally generated, replayable content that you can really challenge yourself. The, the open protocol is for the more elite players, I think. Well, it looks good. It sounds good. I love the uh, animations and the particle effects. Now, a a are we able to look at maybe a screen here? Like, if you were to pause the game or hit escape, do, are we able to switch weapons on the fly during games, or are we only customizing our avatars in between missions? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we made a conscious decision to try to maximize the action mm -hmm. during the play experience, so all the customization is done uh, before the, the next mission begins. So okay. um, as you're playing, you are being a rewarded experience, uh, but the experience doesn't level you up until the very end. So we wanted players, we didn't want them to be managing their characters, stopping the action, going through their inventory, changing their weapons, their special abilities. Mm -hmm. Wanted to really deliver uh, an action-paced uh, Just intense play. at all times. As intense That's as awesome. possible. Yeah, it looks like they are they are battling it out. How uh, how difficult would you say it gets? Like for those hardcore people are starting to get used to really difficult games. You know, uh, what what are the difficulty levels here, and and is it even challenging for you guys as as devs to play? So right now we're playing at the the normal difficulty. Yeah. Um, which is a bit challenging. Uh, we've been watching some players come in, and most people die maybe one or two times. So <laughs> yeah. it was a design decision to make it a bit challenging. Yeah. Our philosophy is tough but fair. We yeah, want yeah. to make sure that. All the enemies you can dodge, any abilities that they have that do crazy amounts of damage, we want you to be able to react appropriately. And one of our main pillars is having intelligent action. So being able to identify what enemies you're uh, facing, knowing the pros and cons, exploiting their weaknesses, getting out of trouble when you have to. Um, but as I mentioned before, we do have three levels of difficulty. Yeah. And the most challenging level is challenging even for us in yeah. the office when we play. So it, I it gets really quite like difficult. I the, really um, the, the trailers you guys have been putting out. Is uh, Are we getting cutscenes in the game? Or are these stories told out through maybe drawings that are animated? How, how, how is this story driven along? So right now we have a, a narration. As you Once you begin a mission, you'll get some information about what the directives of that particular mission are. Yeah. We're also looking at a potential having cutscenes between acts, so uh, an additional storytelling device. Okay. Um, as I mentioned before, we have audio logs that you can listen to within the game, mm -hmm. or we have a data card screen within the main menu, so you can go back and you can read about the various enemies and get yeah. more information about their lore and that sort of stuff. Okay. So there's uh, multiple uh, narrative avenues that we're investing. Okay. And uh, so when do you, when is the game coming out and how much is it going to be? So we're launching on uh, Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Mm -hmm. It's coming out this year, 2016, uh, and you can buy it for $19.99. And Sweet. on Steam, we're going to have a three-pack uh, for $44.99. All right, excellent. It looking good. And if you guys are interested, definitely check it out at LiveLock.com. Uh, at Play Live Lock. Uh -huh. uh, you can follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. It's Play Live Lock. Okay. Thank you so much for showing off the game, and uh, we'll see by. you guys on the next Angry Joe Show.